Hi, I'm Chris Weldon. I'm the Artistic Director of the Worth Center for the Performing Arts. Today, I'm really excited to introduce our newest faculty member, violinist Nathan Wilson. Nathan is a Minnesota native. He studied music at the McPhail School of Music and received his bachelor and master's degrees at the University of Minnesota, where he was a violin performance major. He's an experienced teacher. Many of his students have gone on to play in orchestras across the country and in bands as well of all styles. And he's also an experienced performer having toured nationally with tap style guitarist Billy McLaughlin and being a founding member of his own trio, the EIS Trio. Uh, today I had a chance to play through some music with Nathan as well as to chat about music, teaching, and his vision for strings at the Worth Center. I've been teaching for, oh man, too many years. Uh, I think I've been teaching since 2004. And uh, I kind of got started by a friend who, who needed to move away and said that he had a couple of violin students I needed to teach for him. And I said, no, I'm not interested in teaching. But then he convinced me to do it. And basically, um, I hated the first lesson. And then after that, I really liked it because it was just such a new experience. But then I found out that I actually did enjoy kind of imparting uh, violin and musical wisdom to students. So that's how it started. But then uh, eventually I got to the point where I was um, doing uh, my violin performance degree at the University of Minnesota. And then I got to take several pedagogy classes, including Suzuki pedagogy um, there. And that just kind of kept me going into more heights of teaching. Uh, right now I'm teaching almost, well, actually a little over 30 students every week. And from all, for all ages, from adults uh, to, I have a three-year-old that I'm teaching right now. And I really like, I just enjoy all, all ages and it's a fun challenge for every, for every age. some things that you really love about teaching? I actually know that I'm a, a, a teacher because I can hear the same, you know, twinkle, twinkle or whatever. And as long as I hear the, the student improving and kind of understanding something, it still gives me like, it gets me excited about uh, the fact that they're learning. And that is, as the, is the coolest thing is to see someone learning um, and improving and kind of the light, the light bulb going on, or going on in their head, if you will. Um, then, of course, it's very gratifying to see students going on into college and and um, making a career in music. I have had more than one student who has gone on to to be an, a, a violin teacher or music teacher, and that's really cool. When you think back at when you were a student, what um, what was a piece maybe that inspired you to play? Right. I, I remember in the early 90s finding uh, the Fritz Chrysler CD that Joshua Bell put out. And that was really inspirational because I, I wanted to try a lot of those song pieces. So it kind of in, inspired me to play and practice more. Mm -hmm. um, Preludium Allegro... Oh gosh, just different ones. Um, Caprice Finois. Uh, yeah, Liebes Freud, Liebes Lied. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the Fritz Kreisler stuff, and of course he's the violinist's composer too, so that really helps. Well, 
now that you're teaching all these students, what kind of expectations do you have for them in terms of their practicing and their, their repertoire? The question, the question about expectations is such a good one because it varies differently from teacher to teacher. But I like to see that they're putting a consistent amount of practice in every week. And I usually say uh, an average of five days a week, and that's really on the low end. It'd, it'd be nice to see at least six days. Uh, another watermark is that they are practicing five minutes per year of age. So a 10-year-old should be getting close to 50 minutes a day, etc. So this usually helps them get um, past some of the some of the material later on. That if they're not putting it in the practice, they just won't get through. There's so there's a few glass ceilings in the repertoire. So there's it's definitely there's definitely some practice time that needs to be filled in. But in general, I just want to make sure that I, I let my students know that I want them to play to the best of their ability. That's terrific. How does that work if you're teaching an octogenarian, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> they just have to be practicing 24-7. <laughs> So, uh, do you have a favorite story, maybe, of a student or something that's happened in your teaching? Oh, gosh. There's a lot of, you know, smaller stories. I guess, I don't know, a good maybe a good example of this is when I had a, a couple of students who, who are brothers, and they're like 11, 10, maybe 10 and 12. Yeah, 10 and 12. And I heard that they were going to be playing for the little kind of county fair in the area, Um and actually opening for the main music, like kind of a, a bluegrass country band that came to town. <laughs> and they, uh, I said, you, you want any help on some of the tunes you're going to play or whatever? I guess they were going to main, mainly do fiddle tunes and things like that. And uh, they said, nope, we don't need your help. And I, I said, well, are you sure? Yep, we got it. So I actually went to the concert and they had seven or eight songs picked out, which were fantastic that I'd never heard before. And they had all these cool arrangements. They were trading off, playing different comps and chords. And um, it was just enjoyable to see students that just wanted to do their own thing, didn't need my help, and were confident enough to, to play and, and to perform without that extra input from me. That's great. And that's a testament to your teaching, too, I think. that they. Were... Oh, yeah. I love to see my students go off and kind of fly out of the nest by themselves. <laughs> What are your hopes for strings at the at the Worth Center? I know it's already pretty well established for piano at the Worth Center, but I'd love to see kind of a collection of, of really solid string teachers come along and um, be able to work together, be able to trade ideas, uh, uh, maybe trade students back and forth occasionally, things like that. And um, yeah, to just grow and, and have uh, students really realize what's what's possible and maybe even collaborating with some of the piano students maybe there could be yes. yeah some chamber music and uh, piano trios piano quartets that type of thing so it'd be really neat to see kind of a vibrant um, outpost of, of string music and uh, good classical solid technical things as well Nathan Wilson thank you for for chatting with me and really looking forward to working with you this year absolutely Thanks, Chris. If you'd like to support young artists and the work we do at the Worth Center, just go to worthcenter.org, where you can learn all about us and the work we do to make this world a brighter place, a more colorful place, through the performing arts. Thank you for watching and see you next time.